Okie dokie, Pickle. It's time for Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday, where we crack open the math books here every Tuesday and yes. talk about things that involve numbers. And I think here on this on this very program and here at this at this very company um, company, we've made clear what we think of high school football in Texas. Texas, do you, yeehaw! Do you think Do you think we've been clear about our our position? As far as where Texas high school football ranks in the king in in, in the the grand scheme of things, um, I think we've been clear. If, if we haven't, we need to redesign our logo. <laughs> if, and if we haven't, <laughs> then let me clarify. The best. I think that Texas high school football is the best high school football in the world. And honestly, it's not up for debate. So don't, don't try to argue that with us. No. <laughs> but I also think we need to be I need to be clear and I've said this before but you'll just have to bear with me. Okay. I think I have to be clear about what I mean when I say that. Do I think that every single year the best high school football team in America is in the state of Texas? No. No. I don't. Um, there are times where the best high school football team in America is in Ohio. Mm-hmm. It's in California. California. It's in Florida. Yeah. It's in Georgia. Georgia has it every once in a while, yep. right? There's a few. Uh, Pennsylvania's had it. Pennsylvania's kind of fallen off a little bit. But there are times where the best high school football team in America is not in the state of Texas. Yes. That is for sure. But. And also, if you were to pit a great team from another place against a great team from Texas... I'm not saying that Texas was go- is going to win 100% of the time. Right. I'm not. I'm certainly not saying that. To me, what sets Texas high school football apart, mm-hmm. and the reason that it is the best, is because the quality depth mm-hmm. in the state of Texas. I think, first of all, I think the finest high school football coaches, I mean, there are obviously very good coaches elsewhere. I want to be clear about that. But if you're looking for the highest frequency of great high school football coaches, Texas is, in my opinion, unmatched. Yes. It's not really that close, in my opinion. That if you were to take the 50th best coach in Texas and you were to plant him in basically any other state, Mm -hmm. I think he'd be the best coach in, in almost every state with the exception of a couple. Yep. Right? So there's that. Furthermore... Uh, I think if you were to take the top five teams from California, put them against the top five teams from Texas, you're going to have some interesting matchups. Texas might go two and three. Yep. Texas might go one and four on a bad, bad year or something like that. Right? Same thing with Florida. Mm-hmm. Same same thing with Georgia. A few other places. But give me fifteen through twenty. Right. But fifteen through twenty are going to would be destroy anybody bats. else. They would be just. They would get dog walked. Yeah. Okay. That's what it would be. That's, That's like putting like Cedar Hill up against someone. So what else. I, they're going to so run all over. So someone. what I'm saying is like take the 15th best team from uh, t- from uh, California and put them up, up against Crosby. Mm-hmm. Crosby mm-hmm. will bully ball them, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Okay. So that's where we're starting this conversation. Okay. I hope I've made clear what I mean by when I say that Texas high school football is the best overall as a sum. So. Let's take a look at how Texas did against the teams from outside the state of Texas. Texas versus There the are a grand total of 65 uh, games between Texas and outsiders last year. Texas won 41 of them. Okay? Not bad. Mm-hmm. On, uh, uh, in, on the whole, if you're looking, if you're interested, that is about a... Uh, let's see. What was the final thing here? Oh, my gosh. Don't do that. Crap. 41, uh, out 41, 41 out of 20, uh, 65. 65 is... 165 is about a 630 winning percentage. You take that. 630 winning percentage, you'd certainly take that. Okay? Now, what happened when they played particular states? Because they play, as you can probably see, they're going and as you can probably imagine, they're going to play nearby states a lot more than they're going to play teams from Maine or mm-hmm. teams from Washington, right? So, they played the most number of games. Texas played the most number of games against a pair of, uh, against, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, against a pair of teams or states, New Mexico and Oklahoma. I don't think that's any surprise. You have a lot of West Texas teams that it's just plain old, a lot of El Paso teams, it's just plain old easier to play a team from New Mexico than it is to find a team that can come to you or that you can go to just quicker. 
You know yep. what I mean? Like, just look at look at a map. Um, same thing goes with Oklahoma. You have a lot of teams up in the Panhandle, a lot of teams in North Texas that it's just easier to go and play teams from Oklahoma instead of finding some team, uh, you know, from there. I mean, uh, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, maybe it was 2020. Um, it was like Canadian was looking for a game and they ended up playing a team from Kansas like last second. And it's like, it was only like 40 miles yep. for which them to is, get there. You which is I mean? way better than them trying to go yes. down to somewhere in Southeast Texas to find a game that's going to take five hours to get down there. Exactly right. Now, Texas uh, got the better of New Mexico in a big way. Mm -hmm. seven fourteen winning percentage, uh, you know, 15-6. Uh, Believe it or not, I was actually surprised by this. Oklahoma beat Texas this year 13-8. to eight That is shocking. As far as games... Are concerned now. It's worth mentioning. This includes private schools and public schools. Okay, it's worth mentioning. And when you take a look at the teams that did beat Texas teams, you do have like Jinx beating Mansfield Summit, right? That's a big time program. A uh, Bixby, which is a big program, they beat Mansfield Timberview, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So and, and and Broken Arrow beat Mansfield Legacy. There are a number of teams, and we we mentioned this before. When you get to Oklahoma, there are about six teams five teams that are really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. Jinx, Union, Bixby's in that mix. Uh, Broken Arrow's gotten in that mix. Uh, there's probably one more that I'm missing at least. Um, from that area, mostly in my, mostly generally around the Tulsa area. That's where the, the power nexus is in Oklahoma. Um, but, in, and the other thing is, something to consider, is we don't really know, like as far as enrollments are concerned, we don't really know how to match these things up like for example wellington lost to duncan oklahoma uh duncan oklahoma um enrollment let me see if i can find it real quick um duncan o oklahoma has an enrollment of we don't know uh but <laughs> there is a chance the limit does sorry, not exist the limit does not exist let me see if i can find it real quick um their total enrollment is 947 okay their total enrollment there at duncan high school in oklahoma is 947 they're playing wellington Mm -hmm. Wellington's a 2A Division II program. Yeah. So they're playing a team that's much bigger than them. So that's something to keep in mind as well. There's a lot of different varying factors. But in the end, don't make excuses about it. Oklahoma beat Texas this year, 13-8. Mm -hmm. Where Texas really made hay with a, was with two other bordering teams. Mm -hmm. Okay? Louisiana and Arkansas. Start Louisiana. That's, that's impressive. 8-0 against Louisiana is impressive. Louisiana, uh, Tex Texas goes 8-0 against Louisiana teams, okay? Did not did not get challenged. And by the way, like, when we're talking about teams that are going and beating Louisiana teams, I'm looking up and down, and with all due respect to uh, our friends in, you know, the friends that I'm, I'm on the list here, a few of them, these aren't exactly, this isn't going to Park North Shore going mm -hmm. and beating them. Uh, the best team there is probably Houston Emory Weiner, which was a private school state champion in the six-man ranks. Um, they went there, but then you have West Harden, you have Chester, you have Evadale, and a lot of those is six man because it's it's six man in Southeast Texas. You're really on an island, so yes. you need teams that you can play. But Texas goes six eight zero against Louisiana. Texas wins six and one against Arkansas. The one loss was when Argyle Liberty Christian hosted Pulaski Academy, which is that wild team out of Arkansas that never punts, mm -hmm. and they got um, well they got beat sixty three to fourteen. But the rest of it was. Kind of a, a, a domination, right? Pleasant Grove dominated Nashville. Uh, uh, Parrish beat Arkansas High. Uh, Mansfield beat Bentonville West. Uh, McKinney uh, welcomed in Springfield Harbear, who's a pretty darn good Arkansas oh, team. Oh, yeah, and they absolutely. Beat them, right? Longview beat Bryant, et cetera. There was... So that's where Texas really made their hay, was with Louisiana and Arkansas. Uh, they also won a pair of games against Kansas, a game against a Mexican team, and a game against Louisiana. I'm sorry, uh, against New York. There's a new. Who was that New York team? Let me make sure I look this up. That was fourth All Saints uh, beat Archbishop Stepanak, 38-28. Take that, New York. Sure. Take How that, about York. that? Then there's two teams that Texas took an O for against. One of them's Missouri. Uh, that was when uh, Tomball Christian Homeschool took on Lighthouse Christian out of uh, out of uh, Missouri and lost 26-20. Uh, so Missouri is undefeated against Texas this year. And then there's the one that's probably going to get people talking. Yep. And that's California. Mm -hmm. and California beat Texas three love. Mm -hmm. the, the largest of which now, being the, the Duncanville game. Those games were uh, the modern day game against mm -hmm. Duncanville. And we've talked at length about that. And, and modern day is, in my opinion, 
just it's a different animal. Yes. I think they were the finest high school football team in America last year, and I don't really think I'm going out on a limb there. No, absolutely uh, not. They're uh, certainly the most loaded. You talk to recruiting guys, and they'll tell you that easy. Santa Margarita Catholic out of California beat Fort Worth Nolan Catholic 31-13. to mm-hmm. uh, And then El Paso Del Valle took on El Centro, Central El Centro out of California as well, and lost 36-28. Uh, uh, does that mean that California has better high school football than Texas? It means that they beat them in three games. Mm-hmm. I'm certain. And, and and look, I would put modern day. I think modern day would beat any team in Texas. Yes. I, that's not. A, that, I don't think that's a real. No, I thing. think that's universally understood yes. by anyone who follows high school football. And there's a couple of other programs there that are that are big time powerhouses mm-hmm. that I think could come to Texas and really hang. My once again, my claim would be that if you took the ninth best team in, in California and played against mm-hmm. the ninth best team in Texas, it would not be particularly pretty. Well, and someone opinion. just brought up the point too, and this makes sense. It says, why doesn't Cali or Florida send their public schools versus Texas public schools? Because their public schools can't compete with our public schools. Um, that's certain. they're like super private school, and that's definitely something to talk about. Because no. you look at modern day, and it's like they're playing by a little bit different rules I mean, there, modern, you know? modern day i believe our, our our buddy gabe brooks is on here saying that they had like three sophomore offensive linemen who are like four star or above. Sorry, yeah sophomore one of them didn't even play last year. right so you're talking about a program that is a a prospect factory mm-hmm. they are a different they're a different breed yes. you know what i mean and so that's and their why rules are different there's too, a lot I mean. of there's <laughs> a lot of uh there's a lot of you know ring wailing of you know wailing and gnashing of teeth whenever duncanville got dominated uh, by modern day, mm-hmm. but I just don't necessarily think that that's indicative of anything other than how good modern day is and how they've built their program. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, there you go. Texas does win forty-one to twenty-four. Uh, they got a winning record against seven of the states that they played, and or six of the states they played, and then Oklahoma, Missouri, and California each have some bragging rights over the state of Texas. And there you go. That is Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday, Texas versus the world. Hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out TexasFootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.